welcome to the Interior Savings Across the Lake Swim website. This and the following videos are intended as your online orientation to our event. Please take the time to go through these to help the day go smoothly and to keep everyone safe. And don't forget to get back to our website regularly for updates. Before you decide to register, we have two questions to ask. First, do you have the training ability and endurance to do this event? There are many that make it look easy, but most of those are experienced and trained swimmers. So are you? If you're a newbie, consider joining one of our local Masters Swim Clubs. The coaches can help you with your stroke and your endurance, and can help you decide if you have what it takes to do the swim. And if you have some swim experience, take a look at our gyro loop swim training experience where you can fine-tune your open water and wetsuit skills. So second question, are you sure you're going to be around and able to do this swim? Because remember, race entries are non-refundable and non-transferable, and there are lots of important reasons why. And if for some reason you can't do the swim, you can still enjoy your race package because it's loaded with the best swag around. Regarding the registration page, hopefully it's self-explanatory. First, fill in all the blanks. Second, be honest about your expected crossing time. It allows us to put you in the right wave, and we're going to have some prizing to see how accurate you actually are. Next, read the waiver. It is on the registration page and on the website. As well, you're also going to get a copy in your race package to bring in signed on race day morning. Remember that you're also being held responsible for any kayaker that's supporting you. Should you order any shirt or hoodie on our website, make sure you order the right size for you and use the guidelines provided. Make sure you pick a ferry time and stick to it. You will have a reminder sticker in your race package, but you can trade it if you want. Do you have any friends or family who want to watch the swim from the ferry? We will have a maximum of 80 tickets to sell to spectators at $5 each. These tickets will only be available at race package pickup. The second sailing is the only sailing for spectators. And remember you can save yourself a little bit of money by registering before July the 1st. This year we have something completely new to offer. It's the Aquasphere Open Water Swim Clinics. This is totally cool. A weekly free open water training program at the Gyro Swim Loop. Some of the best open water swim coaches in the Okanagan will teach you open water swim techniques, including sighting, drafting, mass starts, and swimming efficiently. If you're unsure of your abilities, or need some more open water confidence, or you just want to know more about Ogopogo, this is the right spot to come. You could win goggles, or a wetsuit, or any other prizes. All you have to do is show up. The swim clinics start Saturday, June the 4th and continue each consecutive Saturday until July the 9th, the week before the interior savings across the lake swim. Registration starts at 6.45 a.m. followed by the swim clinic at 7 a.m. After the swim clinic, you are invited to do a timed loop of 800 meters around the gyro swim loop. We track your times on our website so you can see your progress. Finally, there's race package pickup. It happens at the Fresh Air Concept Store. On the two days before the swim, between 5 and 8 p.m., you can pick up your goodie bag. You can have somebody else pick it up for you, but they will have to identify themselves and sign for it. If there's any spectator boat tickets still left, they will be sold at this time. Now, the most important thing, in your race package is your written waiver. You will have to read it and sign it and bring it to pick up your race chip in the morning. We will not give a chip without it. So, race day, what should you expect? The following video will walk you through this. Since we need you to get to the park early, get something to eat, but not too much and not too much coffee. Unless, of course, you're planning to warm up your wetsuit. Get to City Park early. Between 6 and 6.30 is good. Once this parking lot is full, remember there's 500 swimmers, 
You might be looking for parking down Leon or Lawrence Avenues. Have your bathing suit on before you get there, as there's no access to changing rooms there other than a small restroom near the beach. Don't forget to bring your wetsuit with you, your race numbered swim cap, your goggles, and your signed waiver, which you'll be trading in for your race chip. Put your race chip on before you lose it, on one of your ankles. If you lose your chip, you will pay some ridiculous amount of money to replace it, and you won't get a time for the swim. And yes, the chip can be covered by your wetsuit. If you want to store some gear, like warm clothes, towels, and shoes to pick up after the swim, go to the Interior Savings Gear Corral near the beach, where you can drop off your numbered save-on bag for safe storage. Your hand will get marked with your race number to identify you when you pick it up after the swim, or you can just use your race cap. Next up, you're going to have to find the ferries. They are at the north end of the park, and you will have to board them in bare feet. You must have your race chip on your ankle. We have our only timing mat there. Since we need to account for everyone who enters the water, all swimmers must cross this mat before the swim. Make sure you get to the ferries early and come to the right sailing time that you picked at registration. You will need your colored ticket from your race bag that identifies which sailing, not which boat, that you're on. It takes time to both load and unload 250 swimmers. So if this race is going to start on time, it will depend on how quickly swimmers get on these boats. Get there early. There are two scheduled sailings at roughly 6.45 to 7, and then again at 7.15 to 7.30. Any spectators that have bought tickets will be on the 7.30 sailing only. The houseboats take 12 to 15 minutes to cross the lake, and then they return for a second load. So you have to disembark quickly. You will be asked to jump into water between 5 and 15 feet deep. You cannot leave any gear on the boat, so don't bring anything extra with you. That's what the gear corral is for. If you are on the early sailing, you have time to swim to shore and yak and use the porta potties. We encourage you to do a little warming up to get used to the cool water, to get your shoulders moving, to get your game face on, to listen to some starting line announcements, and to get a sense of where you're swimming, what landmarks you're going to sight with, like the mountains, the trees in the park, and the big yellow arch. If you have a support paddler, now is the time to find each other. It is good if the paddler has something distinctive on. A big hat or horns, a bright t-shirt or vest, balloons off the bow, that kind of thing. Powered watercraft are not permitted as support craft. Paddlers need to stay clear of the ferries. Ah yes, a few words about the paddlers. There are those marshalling the race and there are ones supporting a specific swimmer. Pay attention to the following six points. First, paddlers, please meet by 6.15 at the south end of the park for a last minute orientation before crossing the lake. The starting area on the west side may be inaccessible. Second, paddlers need to stay on the perimeter of the swim to stay out of the way of swimmers as much as possible. Therefore, swimmers with a paddler should also swim near the periphery of the path of swimmers. Third, paddlers need to have all the requisite equipment for safe escort of all of our swimmers, including a bailing device, a whistle, a tow rope, and an extra life jacket. Sunblock and a snack and maybe water would also be a good idea. Fourth, paddlers must be sufficiently experienced to provide safe escort for their swimmers. This is the responsibility of the swimmer who signed up the paddler. We don't want to be rescuing paddlers on race day. Fifth, paddlers are also likely to be the first to see anyone in trouble. Safety is always our first priority out there. So if a paddler notes a swimmer in distress, they must signal to the nearest powerboat with lifeguards for help. The signal is simply holding a paddle horizontally high in the air while using their whistle or shouting to the lifeguards nearest by. Sixth, paddlers should all enter the water at the south end of City Park and paddle across well before the swim begins. 
The four houseboats that shuttle swimmers over to the start will accompany the swim for spectators and as a protective barrier from boaters from the north side of the swim. Along both sides of the swim will be ten power boats, two for each wave, with each boat carrying two lifeguards. They and the kayakers will be the eyes on the water while the swim progresses. The RCMP will patrol the south side of the swim, covering the portal under the bridge for the duration of the swim. Once all the swimmers have arrived, the pre-race announcer will hand over control of the race to the starter, who will be on a boat just about 50 meters offshore. All the waves are color-coded and will leave exactly two minutes apart. Be ready to get to the start line promptly when your wave is called. You should be in the water well before your wave begins. We encourage the use of wetsuits, which keep you warm, provide flotation, and for many, improve their body position and therefore make you faster. Drafting is also encouraged, but remember this is not a combat swim, so be nice out there. If you're unable, for any reason, to be able to complete the swim, signal whoever is nearest you for assistance, whether by voice or a raised hand. You will otherwise be given 90 minutes to do the swim, although most will be able to do it in half that. If by that time you are not any longer progressing toward the finish line, you will be pulled out of the water and brought to shore. And if for any reason you are unable to complete the swim, you must give your timing chip to an official, because we have to account for you. When you cross the timing mat on the beach, you'll be asked for your timing chip and to clear out of the finish chute as soon as possible. Then you are free to enjoy the festivities pick up your gear, dry off and get something warm on, and await the awards ceremonies. You've made it! Say thank you to all of our sponsors and supporters, because without them this race would not have been possible. Hey, if you have friends or family who want to be part of our swim as a volunteer, encourage them to go to our volunteers section on our website, where many of the roles we need filled are identified. Tell them that it's fun, and there's t-shirts for all the volunteers as well as lots of prizes. Well, thanks for taking the time to go through our videos. You're now prepared as you can be. The last thing left is race day. Good luck and have fun.